The evolution of the Windows operating system has been with us since the early 80s, from the first iterations of the Windows desktop system, all the way through to the more commercialized Windows 2.1 and Windows 3. Moving into Windows 3.1 for work groups, we saw the start of modern networking come into the Windows operating system, and then the more consumerized versions of Windows 95, Windows 98, and then Windows XP. These are all operating systems that forged the foundation of operating systems for the enterprise. With Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 8.1, then cumulating in Windows 10 and now Windows 11, we are not unaccustomed to moving with technology with our hardware to facilitate these operating systems. Whether it was a case of having a CD drive and four gigabytes of RAM for Windows 95, or whether it was having enhanced graphics capability to facilitate the Metro interface for Windows Vista, or now as we're seeing with Windows 11, you need a certain processor of a certain architecture type with a TPM chip and an SSD drive, this will leave an awful lot of legacy computers on the shelf, as it were. All those machines you've had laying around your house, laying around your office, under the desk somewhere, the old tried and tested, the old faithful laptops and desktops that are just too good to throw away. Well, what can we do with these machines? Some may serve a purpose. They may have the right architecture to run line of business applications. We'll need application assessments to see if they will indeed run on Windows 11. All this needs to be adopted. If these applications have a web interface, then we may have a solution here. If the users only really use email, we may have a solution here. The requirements to upgrade from Windows 10 to 11 are on the screen. And the problems are really the TPM chips and the processors available to facilitate that upgrade. Now, whereas Windows 11 is our default operating system and used by the majority of people on the planet, it's not the be all and end all, and it's not the last thing to be said in a conversation. If there's a need to reuse machines in certain areas for a certain persona of user, then we should be looking at lightweight OS, such as Chrome OS Flex. This is the upgrade that PCs and Macs have supposedly been waiting for and will help to extend the life of those devices. It's a no-cost, sustainable way to modernize devices that are already in use, not only at home, but also in the corporate. Now, Chrome OS Flex has some requirements. It's an Intel or AMD CPU. Also, you need four gigabytes of RAM or more, a 16 gigabyte or more of storage. And also, there's no real specific GPU requirements other than you've got one. There's no ARM support, however, so you can see a very much lighter footprint than that of Windows 11. Now, the main purpose of Chrome OS Flex is to reduce e-waste. It's a great story for ESG. It's a way to make your laptops last much longer. Once they're too slow for the original operating system, you can simply just install Chrome OS Flex because it's lightweight and even aging hardware will feel nice, snappy and quick about it. However, there is a significant difference between Chrome OS Flex for the PC and Mac and also Chrome OS that you'll get on a Chromebook, for example. The Chromebooks have a built-in Google chip that will basically handle security aspects. That verified boot and Google security chip is what Chrome OS devices have over the PC equivalent. As mentioned, Chrome OS Flex lacks this chip but it supports UEFI Secure Boot, which provides a similar level of boot security. And like Chrome OS, Chrome OS Flex does not magically automatically manage BIOS or UEFI firmware updates. These must be handled by device administrators and therefore will require access from admins to a management platform that will be able to manage these devices in an enterprise environment. So that's all the talking out the way, it's time for a good old warning. Now, when we install this, it's gonna completely and utterly wipe any information on the hard drive on this aging old PC I have found under the stairs. So make sure you've got a backup. So it didn't take me long to go and find a suitable candidate for the Chrome Flex upgrade. This is a HP 
6360B. Approximate year manufacturer is 2015, so 10 years old. It's got an i5 in it. It's got 8 gigabytes of RAM. It was a Windows 7 PC. I got Windows 10 on it. No problems at all whatsoever. Few little problems. Yes, the K and the I key don't work, so I'll have to be using an external keyboard. But other than that, it's suitable and a good candidate for us to get Chrome Flex on this machine. So, we got ourselves a copy of Chrome Flex and we've got the USB stick ready to put it in and boot from and get this installation running. Now you're going to have to start in the BIOS really. That can be achieved by pressing any number of the following keys F1, F2, F8, F9, F10, F11 or delete depending on your model of laptop and that will take you into the BIOS. And what you're looking for is the UEFI setting. Now you might be okay and this might be enabled or you might have a really old laptop like what I have and it could be set to eSATA boot. You wanna make sure it's set to UEFI boot or it'll just keep on rotating around trying to boot. Once you set your boot options to boot from the USB, Chrome OS Flex is going to boot and then it's down to you then to go through all the settings. What keyboard you've got, do you need any accessibility options? And you can then say, right, okay, do I either want to just go ahead and install Flex or do I just want to have a go and just run it off the USB stick? Now, it will give you that warning I mentioned that it will erase your entire hard drive. So make sure you've had a backup of it and you've moved anything you need off your laptop. Now, here's the thing. It won't take too long before that installation's going to be complete. And once it has been completed, then you're going to be able to reboot and get in on Chrome OS. Now it's time to log in with an account that you want to use on your new Chrome OS Flex PC or Mac. Go through the two-step verification as well, and then you're ready to go. You can transfer all your information over. You can sync with your existing Google accounts. And you're ready to use this PC sustainably and not throw it in the bin. Now, as we've mentioned, this is Chrome OS Flex. It's not Chrome OS. It'll need to be managed by an admin. Security will need to be managed. And it's got a very limited range of what it will do. It's not a silver bullet. It certainly is sticking plaster.